I'm going to open up our terrain module. This is where we create a surface. Um, most resource roads these days are, are designed from surveys that are, um, well, there's, there's a few different types of surveys. The first survey I'm going to deal with is LIDAR. It's uh, fairly new, but it's become very useful in the um, low volume road business. So what I'm going to do is I want to read in a whole bunch of LIDAR data. And the LIDAR data comes in, in big blocks. I've got, I've got a quick question here. I just want to answer the question. Um, I'm not quite sure why we're getting <laughs> this question, how many people are on the line. We have uh, almost 100 people watching today, so um, that's quite a quite a few. I think our limit is 100, so um, there's only 60 actually connected, so there's lots of room for more people if they want to join in. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Now, LiDAR data. So I want to bring in a bunch of LiDAR data. It's large, millions of points per tile. If I just go and open a LiDAR file, I'm going to get all the data points, and I'm not necessarily going to get data points in the area of interest. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open a design which has a feature in it. Now, where this feature came from is a bit of a mystery. We can, we can uh, talk about that later. But let's assume you know where you want to build a road roughly. So you have a line that represents a corridor. You may also have a line that represents a polygon. In any event, you've got something in real world coordinates that indicates your area of interest. Now I can bring in my LiDAR data with a lot more information. So I'm going to bring in uh, five LiDAR files. These are in XYZ format, but we can read all kinds of different formats. We can read ASCII text. That's what we've got now. We can also read um, LAS, which is a fairly common LiDAR format. And we can bring in 3D data from various other sources, like Land XML. If somebody's built a surface in another package, they can save it out as Land XML. And uh, so there's lots of different ways to get your 3D information in. Let's bring in these LiDAR files. Now, um, I've made an, an ASCII import for LiDAR already, so I'm ready to go. And I'm just going to go into the test tab, make sure everything's working correctly. This is what the file looks like, at least the first few lines. Um, X, Y, Z, coordinates, and uh, it's fairly simple, just space delimited. And it's reading them incorrectly. You can see here X, Y, Z have been parsed out of that file. Great. Now, I don't want to read every single point, and there's a lot of them. So I go into my selection tab here, and I can add what we call a region, and I want to add a corridor region. So it's going to be a corridor that's 200 meters wide, and it's based on that feature that I drew, the one that you can see poking out in the background here. So that feature is my area of interest, plus, um, oh, let's change that to 200. 200 meters, uh, that's 100 meters on each side. Um, now I have two regions. I have the corridor region. I want to read all points inside the corridor. And then I have everything else. And for everything else, I'm just going to thin it down. I'll thin it down by decimating the data. I'll read in 1 and 10 points, or skip 9 if you like. OK, so I start reading that in. Now, un unfortunately, this takes about 10 minutes. So I'm not going to let you sit through that. I'll just cancel out of here. And you can see um, that it started to read in um, all five files. And it got a little bit of a way through the uh, the first one. And you can see if you if you look closely here that there's actually 100 meters away from the road. There's a bit of a, a line here where we go from full density, especially on this side, you can see it. Full density near the the, the corridor, the, the, the feature that represents my preliminary road line, and then less dense outside of that area. So I'll just bring in the, uh, the completed design and, and, uh, or the completed surface, and I'll show you what that looks like. We've got a question. Um, Peter wants to know if we can import these features from a shape file, and the answer is absolutely. You can bring in uh, various um, file formats when you're trying to create your area of interest. Um, you can draw it, of course, and we're going to look at um, air photos in a sec. 
Um, but you can also insert files from various sources. So one of those sources is uh, Shape. You can also import DWG. You can import DGN. That's new in, in version 6. And um, all kinds of other formats. XYZ text, um, which might be coming from a GPS survey. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways to bring in information. OK. Um, now, I've actually got a bunch of contours in here. Let's, let's pretend I didn't. Let's just delete those, delete the terrain. And here's all the data. So as you can see, um, we've got lots of points. Uh, typical LiDAR survey, which has not been made into a grid. There's a difference between a gridded LiDAR file and a non-gridded file. Um, this is the raw data. And you can zoom in and you can see how far apart the points are. And you get real, real, um, like there's a little bit of a gap there. And I can actually measure how big that gap is um, across from, say, here to here. There's a gap there of about 10 meters. Now, um, that's, that's not bad. But if you had read this data in as a gridded file, there may be fewer points in it. It may be in quite a compact format, too. You can put grids into really compact formats like DEM. Um, uh, what do they call that? Let's say uh, yeah, there's, there's a various names for it. But the fact is it's, it's very compact and uh, nice for moving around large data sets. However, in a grid format, you wouldn't know um, how accurate the data, the original survey was. And, and sometimes there are larger than 10 meter gaps in your data. And once it's put into a grid format, that's kind of hidden from you. Anyway, this is this is real life data. Um, it has not been thinned uh, in the area near the corridor. And it has been thinned outside the corridor. And I've got 100, just over a million points here. Great. So now that I've got my three-dimensional data in the software, um, I need to make a surface. So I'm just going to do that. Here's our terrain calculation. I'm going to um, create contours, let's say 10 meter and 2 meter spacing. That seems reasonable. I can control line types and colors and so on. Um, I can even put in labels if I want. I'm going to skip that step. Um, OK, let's see what this does. Now, this is a lot of points. We're talking about a million data points here. And our software manages up to about 5 million. You can actually read in more than 5 million, but you'll start to have trouble making um, a surface or um, creating contours and things like that. There we go. There's, there's my data with contours on it. And now let's look at it in 3D. It takes a little while to build the triangles in 3D, so I'll try and keep you interested meanwhile. Um, so a million points is, is a lot of data. Um, if you've got a million points per tile and you've got 20 or 30 tiles, it is important to select which is your area of interest and thin the data outside the area of interest so you don't overload our software. Um, there's the surface. Looks great. We can zoom in. We can um, rotate. Now my screen updates very quickly. Your screen will take a little while to, to update. But essentially, you can, you can move around in here and see what the surface looks like. And as you can see, it looks pretty reasonable. There's no obvious um, spikes or holes or missing triangles. Um, when you're dealing with a survey other than LiDAR, you may find some of that. And uh, the 3D is a great way to figure out what's going on in terms of uh, whether your survey data is accurate, uh, whether there's some erroneous points, things like that. OK, now um, one more thing. I'm just going to put in the background here a uh, air photo. It's not really an air photo. I just stole it from Google Earth. Um, anyway, I put this image in a terrain file. We can read in all kinds of different images, ECW um, and JPEG, PNG, um, GeoTIFF, DEMs, all kinds of things. So you can put an air photo in the background. Now, 
this has been washed out a little bit. There's a few options for your, your air photos. You can, um, first of all, you can turn them on and off, which is nice. And then you can also wash them out. So I'll, I'll just turn out the washout, turn off the washout factor here. And there we go. Now you can see the, the image in its, in its full resolution. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going to, for the sake of continuity, carry on um, and work through a resource road from LiDAR. And I'm going to come back and show you various other ways to get surfaces and various other ways to create alignments. So um, let's imagine for a moment here that we, uh, we don't even know where the road's going to go. I want to find a place, a way to get from A to B. So I've actually got a, a feature in here called Route 2 that I created not too long ago. I'm just going to delete that. Um, and we've also got a feature that you can see in orange there, um, which I read in from a, um, an XML file, land XML. Let's say I wanted to find from a, a route from here over to there, and I don't like this one. I want to see a, another route. Oh, by the way, first of all, let's, let's look at this route number one. Um, this is the terrain module. We haven't even started road design yet, but we can create a, a window, a profile. I've already got one here, actually. I just have to uh, go like so and tile horizontally. There we go. So there's my profile of, of route number one. That was the, the one that was in my original alignment file. Okay, there it is. There's the profile. And as I move along the plan, you can see the line in the profile. As I move in the profile, you can see a little feature. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little cursor moving in the plan as well. Okay, now I want to make an alternate route. Okay, so I'll go back to the plan window here. I'm going to bring in a screen layout that is ready for pegging. I call it pegging. Uh, there may be another more technical term for it. But the idea is to find a route from A to B um, that doesn't have grades that are too steep and doesn't go through any lakes or uh, buildings or anything like that. OK, so let's start by creating a new feature. This feature I'll call Route 2. And it's going to be a draped feature. So it has uh, this model that thing turned on and elevations turned off. OK, so it's going to drape on the surface. I'm going to draw it with the mouse. We're going to start right about here, and we'll continue along like so. Let's put it in the profile window. You just type up F5 to update. The idea is that the profile can show any feature on your terrain. So you can use it to draw cross sections, or in this case, fence sections, the limit that I'm drawing. The other thing that's kind of useful when I'm trying to find a route the average grade. So if I click here and create a new point, there it is. I've just put a new point down there. Um, first of all, it's updated the profile. And second of all, it's telling me that between this point that I just created and the last point I created, the average grade is 0.3%. And going along here, it's pretty flat, not, not too much of interest. But as soon as I get to here, you can see that we're going down some steep contours. And if I click to anchor that point down, you can see we've got a, uh, a real plummeting grade. And it's telling me that that last segment that I just drew has an average grade of 15%. Oh, that's maybe a bad idea. What should I do about that? Well, I think I'll move over this way. And that gives me an average of 5%. But as you can see here, there's some grades in between. So maybe I should do that in smaller pieces. So I'll do a piece here. That's 7%. Uh, this one is now 6. Oh, that's not steep enough. Let's go down a little. 8. This might look a little easier for you to see if I take out the uh, air photo. Obviously, um, the air photo is useful um, if you're you know, if you've got a high resolution screen, you can look at the stuff in the background, then, um, you know, the airfoot is great. I'm just going to turn it off for the sake of uh, clarity, however, while I'm showing you what I'm